Good morning from St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School in San Antonio, Texas. And welcome to morning prayer for the morning of Monday, May the 30th. And this is the Monday following the seventh Sunday of Easter, but this is also Memorial Day. And so we're going to um, have some reflections about that today in our prayers and in our reflection later on. One thing I'd like to say about Memorial Day that is sometimes not, um, not mentioned as much, Memorial Day is not Veterans Day, <clears throat> which happens, of course, in the fall. Memorial Day is the day that we remember those who have died for the service of the country. And, um, and we want to remember them today. So if you have people that you know, or family members or friends, who have given their lives for us, we ask that you remember them today during our morning prayer. So today we are praying for the situation in Ukraine and we are remembering those who have lost their lives in this conflict. In the Anglican Communion, we're praying for the Diocese of Lucknow and the Church of North India. In our own diocese, we're praying for Trinity Church in Victoria and Trinity Church in Far. And we want to be sure that all of you, whether you are members of St. Thomas or uh, members of other Episcopal churches or even not members of Episcopal churches, we want to be sure that you know that you are all welcome to our deck for morning prayer and for all of you to bring your own concerns, your intentions and your thanksgivings to prayer this morning. Oh, and the next thing, I've got a lot of things to talk about this morning. Um, we talked it over and we decided that we do know that many people who attend morning prayer from our own church also attend Rite One, the service, the Rite One service on Sunday. And so um, I decided that once a week, probably, <laughs> we will say the morning prayer, the Rite One morning prayer. And if you're not familiar with it, uh, the page numbers are down there in the description. But um, if you're not familiar with it, you might just want to listen. Um, the one thing I love, this is me personally, about Right One is the beauty of the language and the cadence of the language and how, how beautiful it is. And so it just enjoy that. I hope you enjoy that, that beauty, the language. So we're going to start today on page 39 in the Book of Common Prayer. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. On page 41, let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us. Spare thou those who confess their faults. Restore thou those who are penitent, according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant us absolution and remission of all our sins, true repentance and amendment of life, and the grace and consolation of his Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia, Christ the Lord ascendeth into heaven. O come, let us adore him. Alleluia. And on page 46, let's say Christ our Passover. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, neither with the leaven of malice and wickedness, 
but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead, and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Our psalm today is Psalm 89, part 1, and that's on page 713. Your love, O Lord, forever will I sing. From age to age my mouth will proclaim your faithfulness. For I am persuaded that your love is established forever. You have set your faithfulness firmly in the heavens. I have made a covenant with my chosen one. I have sworn an oath to David, my servant. I will establish your line forever and preserve your throne for all generations. The heavens bear witness to your wonders, O Lord, and to your faithfulness in the assembly of the holy ones. For who in the skies can be compared to the Lord? Who is like the Lord among the gods? God is much to be feared in the council of the holy ones, great and terrible to all those round about him. Who is like you, Lord God of hosts? O mighty Lord, your faithfulness is all around you. You rule the raging of the sea and still the surging of its waves. You have crushed Rahab of the deep with a deadly wound. You have scattered your enemies with your mighty arm. Yours are the heavens, the earth also is yours. You laid the foundations of the world and all that is in it. You have made the north and the south. Tabor and Harmon rejoice in your name. You have a mighty arm, strong as your hand and high as your right hand. Righteousness and justice are the foundations of your throne. Love and truth go before your face. Happy are the people who know the festal shout. They walk, O Lord, in the light of your presence. They rejoice daily in your name. They are jubilant in your righteousness, for you are the glory of their strength, and by your favor our might is exalted. Truly the Lord is our ruler, the Holy One of Israel is our King. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our first reading for today, we are still in Ephesians, and we're beginning chapter 3, and we're going to read from uh, verse 1 through verse 13. <clears throat> this is the reason that I, Paul, am a prisoner for Christ Jesus for the sake of you Gentiles. For surely you have already heard of the commission of God's grace that was given to me for you, and how the mystery was made known to me by revelation, as I wrote above in a few words a reading of which will enable you to perceive my understanding of the mystery of Christ. In former generations, this mystery was not made known to humankind, as it has now been revealed to his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. That is, the Gentiles have become fellow heirs, members of the same body and sharers in the promise of Christ Jesus through the gospel. Of this gospel, I have become a servant according to the gift of God's grace that was given me by the working of his power. Although I am the very least of all the saints, this grace was given me to bring to the Gentiles the news of the boundless riches of Christ and to make everyone see what is the plan of the mystery hidden for ages in God who created all things so that through the church, the wisdom of God in its rich variety May, might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. This was in accordance with the eternal purpose that he has carried out in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have access to God in boldness and confidence through faith in him. I pray, therefore, that you may not lose heart over my sufferings for you. They are your glory. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Our first canticle for today is on page 49, a song of praise. Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, praised and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou for the name of thy majesty, praise it and, above all, and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy holiness, praise it and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou that beholdest the depths and dwellest between the cherubim, praise it and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou on the glorious throne of thy kingdom, praise it and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, praise it and exalted above all forever. Blessed art thou, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praise it and exalted above all forever. And now let's go to our second reading. We're in St. Matthew in chapter 8, and we're going to read from verse 5 to verse 17. When Jesus entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes, and to another, come, and he comes, and to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, many will come from east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go, let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her, and she got up and began to serve him. That evening they brought to him many who were possessed with demons, and he cast out the spirits with a word and cured all who were sick. This was to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet Isaiah. He took our infirmities and bore our diseases. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And of course, this is um, an appropriate reading for today. And I thought I'd say a little bit about the centurion. Centurions were, um, I think they would be considered now either first lieutenants or captains in the army. Um, they were the backbone of the Roman army. And they did not, as the name implies, have 100 men under them. They had anywhere between 50 and 80 men under them. But um, they were very, um, this particular centurion apparently just, you can sort of tell by context, had served there uh, in Israel for a while and was known to the people, the Jews there, and understood their customs and respected their customs. Because you notice that um, he does not say, you know, that, that Jesus needs to come into his house, that, that he's not worthy. And, and so he, he would have known that Jews typically did not go into the homes of the Gentiles. But, but notice what Jesus is saying, that even among the Jews, he's not found faith like he found in this soldier, this backbone of the Roman army, uh, and this Gentile. So I thought I'd just add a little bit to that reading. Our second canticle for today is on page 52, the Te Deum, or We Praise Thee. We praise thee, O God. We acknowledge thee to be the Lord. All the earth doth worship thee, the Father everlasting. To thee all angels cry aloud, the heavens and all the powers therein. To thee cherubim and seraphim continually do cry, Holy, 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 Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of the majesty of thy glory. The glorious company of the apostles praise thee. The goodly fellowship of the prophets praise thee. The noble army of martyrs praise thee. The Holy Church throughout all the world doth acknowledge thee. 
the Father of an infinite majesty, thine adorable, true, and only Son, also the Holy Ghost, the Comforter. Thou art the King of glory, O Christ. Thou art the everlasting Son of the Father. When thou tookest upon thee to deliver man, thou didst humble thyself to be born of a virgin. When thou hadst overcome the sharpness of death, thou didst open the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Thou sittest at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. We believe that thou shalt come to be our judge. We therefore pray thee, help thy servants, whom thou hast redeemed with thy precious blood. Make them to be numbered with thy saints in glory everlasting. And let's continue right there with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And now let us pray together in, the, in whatever your, your favorite version of it, of the Lord's Prayer, in whatever language that you say it in. Let us say together the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And on page 55, let's say suffrages A. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us and grant us thy salvation. Endure thy ministers with righteousness and make thy chosen people joyful. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in thee can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under thy care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let thy way be known upon earth, thy saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with thy Holy Spirit. And let's say our collect for today, which is on page 175, the collect for the seventh Sunday of Easter. O God, the King of glory, who hast exalted thine only Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph unto thy kingdom in heaven, we beseech thee, leave us not comfortless, but send to us thine Holy Ghost to comfort us and exalt us unto the same place whither our Savior Christ is gone before who liveth and reigneth with thee and the same Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. Amen. And I'd like to add a prayer today. Um, even though this is Memorial Day and we're remembering those um, who have died in the service of our country, let us pray today for those who are in the armed forces of our country. And this is on page 823. Almighty God, we commend to your gracious care and keeping all the men and women of our armed forces at home and abroad. Defend them day by day with your heavenly grace. Strengthen them in their trials and temptations. Give them courage to face the perils which beset them and grant them a sense of your abiding presence wherever they may be. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now on page 57, let's say the Collect for Peace. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, 
through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And on page 58, our prayer for mission. O God, who hast made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, and didst send thy blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near, grant that people everywhere may seek after thee and find thee. Bring the nations into thy fold, pour out thy Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of thy kingdom. Through the same, thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And on page 59, the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, who hast given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication unto thee, and has promised through thy well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, thou wilt be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. And now a few moments for reflection. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.